Welcome to Tsuchi This Week, I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's top stories, we join a training seminar in Durban, South Africa, as local volunteers remain steadfast in learning more about Tsuchi. In Penang, Malaysia, one six-year-old boy invites his friends to celebrate his birthday by donating money to charity. And we take a look behind the scenes at Dial Technology to see how they turn plastic bottles into eco-friendly textiles. To help those without medical insurance, U.S. TEMA members have been holding free clinics every three months in Rosamond, California. Their most recent free clinic helped a total of 93 people. But first, let's go to Malaysia, where the monthly free clinic, organized by the Tsuchi Muar branch, offered dental care for the first time. To help those in need of medical assistance, since 2003, the Tsuchi Muar branch has been hosting free clinics on a monthly basis. However, without enough space and resources, TIMA members haven't been able to offer dental care. Thankfully, today that is about to change. I was very surprised when I heard that the free clinic will offer free dental checkups. It is very convenient for us because we don't have to go to the hospital and wait. Now that our free clinic offers dental care, all of us hope that care recipients can take better care of their teeth. Arriving at the free clinic with her daughters is care recipient Diva, whose daughters suffer from malocclusion and tooth decay. Thankfully, after today's clinic, Diva can finally let go of some of her worries. My children have tooth problems, some of their teeth overlap. I need to thank Dr. Ling for giving them a thorough dental examination. I hope in the future we will have access to dental scaling equipment. However, the most important thing now is to teach care recipients how to brush their teeth properly. As the inclusion of dental care was well received by patients, in the years to come, Tsuji Moa branch will continue to offer such services at its monthly free clinic. Meanwhile, in the United States, on a tri-monthly basis, a free clinic is held in Rosamond, California to help those with a medical insurance. They have been a blessing to our community because they have no medical facilities around here that's close to them. They work in the fields with their backs, with their legs, with their arms. They, they like the acupuncturist. It helps them out. We're getting a lot of people that move from L.A. that also do not have insurance. Volunteering at the free clinic is Jennifer Ramirez, who is here to reciprocate Tsuji's kindness, as both her parents have been the recipients of Tsuji's free clinic for years. For me, I, it's an incredible experience. Um, I want to be a nurse, so it helps me with my knowledge, and it helps me to be patient and just smile at everyone. I came at 3.20 a.m. today. Because I'm feeling so happy when the clinic come here. I met Brother Tai when I joined City's recycling event with my father. He told me that since I'm a dentist, I should contribute my share and help out at the free clinic. With words of mouth referrals, City's free clinic has attracted many to join the volunteers' ranks. To inspire those in need to become givers, volunteers also take the time to explain the concept behind Tsuji's bamboo coin bank. Master Zen Yang wanted to help those in greater need, but she needed money to do so. She asked 30 housewives to join her ranks. Performing a silent song together like one big family, Thanks to Tsuji's free clinic, recipients are not on the road to a speedy recovery. Tsuji volunteers and local volunteers from South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland and Mozambique gathered in Durban, South Africa for a volunteer training seminar. Despite the language barrier, volunteers all remain undeterred in learning Tsuji's humanitarian spirit. <laughs> In Durban, South Africa, a local Tzu Ching listens intently before translating English into Zulu for her fellow volunteers. Among the participants at the training seminar, another volunteer again translates the Zulu dialect for their counterparts from Lesotho. 
Though not understanding a word of Chinese, the hundreds of volunteers present from four different countries are learning to do humanitarian spirits through sign language songs. <laughs> You plant crops, right? You plant good seeds and you take away all the bad weeds. Nothing is too difficult when one has the will to learn, as volunteers take notes in hopes of gaining a better understanding of the Buddhist NGO. Together. Volunteers from different areas once again turned their happy thoughts into songs and end the day on a perfect note. <laughs>A wedding is an occasion to celebrate the union of two people in love. However, in Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur, a bride also used her special day to spread city's ideals to her guest. But first, let's go to Halian City Hospital in Taiwan. Halian City Hospital is hosting an event to teach members of the public how to make delicious snacks out of fresh ingredients. <laughs> Roselle or Rosella fruit is often used in tea, but by combining it with sugar and glutinous rice, a simple and eye-pleasing snack can be made. More importantly, the plant has many health benefits. The nutritional values of Rosella fruit is very high. It contains bioflavonoids and has anti-inflammatory functions as well as helps to lower your lipid levels. The dietitian also suggests eating healthy by consuming less food with artificial ingredients. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Malaysia, a bride and groom are helping to spread the benefits of vegetarianism at their wedding. And for their guests, the couple prepared Siddhis Jing's aphorisms. There's a lot of encouragement and thoughts on filial piety and many words of gratitude. A vegetarian for 15 years, the bride, Huang Sihui, convinced her family to serve vegetarian dishes at the wedding banquet, thus taking the opportunity to promote the benefits of a meatless diet to her guests. She attended today's year and blessing ceremony and was very inspired. She vowed to help the master recruit my bodhisattvas. I wanted to use my special day to spread the love further so that more people can be introduced to Tzuji. This helps me to fulfill my wish of helping to recruit a million bodhisattvas. Tzuji volunteers share a clip on the charitable deeds Tzuji has been doing around the world with the wedding guests, inspiring many to join the Million Bodhisattva campaign. I saw how a few dollars from me could help so many people. I feel okay about it, so I will support the cause. In doing something for others, this couple is on the right path of life together, filled with happiness and blessings. Helping inmates to lead a life free from sickness, the medical staff from Hualien City Hospital recently visited the Hualien Prison to conduct a health prevention clinic. Here's more. Led by Hualien City Hospital's Deputy Superintendent Xu Wenlin, the hospital's medical staff is visiting the Hualien Prison to hold a preventative health screening. This is the first time we are here doing preventative measures, which include basic health checks and cancer screening. If this a problem, we can immediately treat it. Then you definitely help us to take care of our inmates' health. It is not easy for those in the prison to pay a visit to the hospital. Thus, the warden invited City Hospital to check on the health of those over 40 years of age and 160 inmates in total participated. These health checks gives us the opportunity to understand the conditions of our body better. The inmates also had an opportunity to ask the doctors any questions about their health, giving those behind bars a comprehensive health screening. It is never too old or too young to start doing good deeds, as was the case with six-year-old Yang Hao Yu of Penang, Malaysia, who asked his friends to donate their money to charity instead of buying him a birthday present. Happy Birthdays are an occasion that old children look forward to, and besides eating cake, the most anticipated moment is opening presents, however. <laughs>
Although with a birthday gift this year, Hao Yu is still having a fabulous time with his friends. I think this is a good idea. We decided to encourage those attending the birthday party to contribute their love. Six-year-old Hao Yu is a Ciji member, and he earns his allowance by helping out with household chores. Supported by those around him, Yang Hao Yu bravely asked his friends to donate a little. I think it is great to teach them the importance of helping the less fortunate at a young age. <laughs> As soon as he arrives at school, Hao Yu quickly donates the money he has received on his birthday. He even hands out receipts personally to those that donated their love. Celebrating his birthday by helping the less fortunate. For Yang Hao Yu and those around him, it was one day that they will never forget. Continuing with our report on how communities across Taiwan are preparing themselves to better face disasters, this time we travel to Jinghua community in Tainan City. Here in the small shed, all manners of tools to be used in a disaster can be found. Generators, chainsaw, electric wires, rope. Pick axes, spades, holes, it's all here. Several weekends a year, the head of Tainan's Jinghua Borough, Ke Kun Shen, brings together the community's volunteer response providers for a refresher course on emergency procedures. Next to the supply shed is a large map of the community, with disaster routes, emergency shelters, and the area's medical clinics all clearly marked out. We have a total of 11 clinics in this community, so if a disaster occurs, these 11 clinics will become our first aid stations. Water is also a crucial element when combating any disaster. When it rains, the water will sink into the ground at about 10 meters, so we dug a well and can now pump out that water when we need it. Community leaders have also signed agreements with local businesses, in which businesses will provide whatever material assistance is needed during a disaster. We see the community as our home. We think about what we can do for the community, not what the community can do for us. In the event of a major disaster, everything in this pharmacy is available for the use of those who need it. Under the leadership of Boral Head Ke, the community's volunteer disaster response team has grown to 130 people, many of them seniors who are enjoying the opportunity to give back. We seniors are really willing to do this. Why? Because, except for eating, we don't really have anything to do when we have somewhere to be and do that makes us happy. Come on. Come on. Hello. Hello. The volunteers also make it a point to visit seniors that are ill or have trouble getting out of the house to explain how to remain safe in a disaster. During earthquakes, the power might show circuit, so stay away from any wires. The community also invites medical personnel and professional firefighters to come give training classes. These skills might really come in handy. 
The government is limited in its manpower and funding. Therefore, when working to make communities safer, it should try to make use of the skills and time that citizens are willing to offer. For its efforts, Tainan Jinghua Community received Taiwan's first ever Safe Community Certification, showing once again that disaster prevention starts with you and me. In our next report, we go behind the scenes to see how Zaya Technologies' eco-friendly apparels are made. But first, we follow the representatives from the island nation of Kiribati as they visit Zaya Technology to learn more about recycling. One, one. Showcasing fashion book clothes made up by PET bottles, today a representative from the island nation of Kiribati are visiting Zaya Technology, a company dedicated to producing eco-friendly products. Coming here is uh, very surprised and uh, very amazed to see how the, this company, the high technology, can change the plastic or PET or uh, PET bottles or plastic into something which can be reused. One of the main challenges is the waste, the amount of waste that we have, like PET bottles, plastic bags, you know, and it, it's all over the place and we don't know what to do with it. PET bottles other than learning of the concept behind the brand representatives also tried out meals made from tzuji's instant rice and noodles and was amazed by the technology kiribati is currently facing rising sea levels and is in need of new ways to grow food and find safe drinking water we have a lot of people losing their homes we don't have any more the crops that small crops that we have to for our food it's all destroyed the drinking water and the washing water is all becoming salty now. The green bottle mm -hmm. and the white bottle without any dye. Thanks to visit representatives of Kiribati, not only go home with knowledge, but also determination to safeguard their country. Remove the bottle rings and sort the bottles according to colors. After the PET bottles are crushed, they are put into bags over here and are ready to be transformed into eco-friendly apparel. However, is this clothing safe for us to wear? After being cut into pieces, the PET bottle flakes are carefully examined under an infrared spectrometer. Neck through an electron microscope, researchers look into their fiber structure to make sure of their quality. The purpose of the lab test is to find out if the fabrics are free of chemical additives. We need to make sure they won't harm the human body because our fabrics are made from recycled plastic bottles. Adding chemical liquids into a beaker. Through this simple act, researchers can test for chemical additives. Normally, plastic additives are added when making fabrics. We don't want these chemicals to affect the pH level of our fabric because they can harm the human body. After countless laboratory examination, these textiles are then turned into different apparels embedded with city's humanistic spirit. Embedding environmental concepts and wisdom into relief missions, in the years to come, dye technologies will continue to safeguard our Mother Earth. For the past few years, every Wednesday morning at the Tsuji Guandu Grounds in Taipei, patients of the Yanzi Halfway House have been coming to practice recycling with local volunteers. For many, the weekly activity has become a key in learning to face the world in a healthy way. Every Wednesday morning at Tsuji Guandu Grounds in Taipei, recycling volunteers gather to recycle. They work on removing the plastic greens from the tops of PET bottles where another group is just as busy. Step by step, this group of patients from the Yanzi Halfway House is flattening bottles soon to be recycled. Among them is Miss Zhang, who has been participating in the event for more than five years. <laughs> If I was at home alone, I would perhaps fall into a bad state of mind. But being out here with others, it feels like we're one big family. When she first came, she was on so many medications. When she went out for a walk, she had a towel that was wrapped around her neck. It kept slipping off and she kept needing help to pick it up. Everyone works silently and as one. 
by recycling, these patients are finding a path through which helps to return their lives to normal. Before, their faces lacked expression. When they were at the hospital receiving treatment, they were treated very strictly. By coming here to this warm environment, they are more willing to open up. In the beginning, they would go to the bathroom under the tree or use other people's cups. Or when the snacks came out, they would all make a grab for them. Here in Guangdu, this group of patients is not only doing their part for the earth, but also learning how to make their lives beautiful once more. In Taiwan, Sanxia Ziji volunteers and a local Chinese orchestra came together to hold a musical gathering at the Chunhui Intellectual Disability Center. Volunteers also invited residents to join them in song, making the event one full of energy and warmth. <laughs> As the orchestra plays on stage, audience members clap their hands in time. Later, the host and a young performer play a piano duet. Following the performance, Ziji volunteers then invite audience members to join them in singing their favorite folk songs. Here at the Chunhui Intellectual Disability Center, Sanxia Ziji volunteers work with the Chinese orchestra to organize this musical gathering. We're really impressed by city volunteers and we respect you very much. You are our role models. Inspired by the volunteers' compassion, Zhuang Yuying decided to follow in their footsteps. She said helping the less fortunate has been a blessing. Since our parents give us a healthy body, we should do our best to help the less fortunate. I'm really happy. The singing is pleasant to hear. I'm also very thankful for my mother's care. I think this gathering is a very meaningful event. At the end of the day, both volunteers and residents of the center return home with hearts filled with joy. The Tsuji Canada chapter started a concentric circle study group back in November 26, 2006. And in the past seven years, participants have read 20 volumes of the Daily Journal of Master Jin Yin and the Water Repentance Sutra. Upon its recent conclusion, participants applied all they have learned into their daily lives. In Vancouver, Canada, at the last study session for this group of city volunteers, each picks up a red envelope and thinks about the wisdom each item contains. People should not be sharp and unwilling. They should try to be more like a paperclip, smooth and bending, and always know the way out of a situation. When you use a rubber band to flick someone, it will hurt you too. So I think we need to approach a situation where we don't hurt another's feeling as well as our own. In total, this study group read 20 volumes of the Daily Journal of Master Zhen Yan and three sections of the Water Repentance Sutra. Although it is the end of this study group, the wisdom they have gained will last volunteers for a lifetime. At the end of the show, we return to Taiwan and join Ziji volunteers and students from Ziji's parent and child class in Yunlin, where they hosted a second-hand flea market to help raise funds for Typhoon Haiyan survivors. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.